Hello, today's the 27th, and we're doing business and social stories to start your week, and I have a jelly bean in my mouth. <laughs> we're playing the Identify by Flavor game. <laughs> it was very distracting. It was like a good five minutes of just eating jelly beans. Well, let's start with some bad news, and uh, this is just kind of a roll-up of everything that we've been talking about for the last month or two. Laid-off techies face a sense of impending doom with job cuts the highest since the dot-com crash. <laughs> oh yeah, things are bad. Although my GP says that that's uh, more from the blood poisoning, but that's fine. <laughs> that impending sense of doom, that's just your heart hammering out of its chest. <laughs> yeah. Does he say that you have AI in your blood? Because I think that's what's <laughs> causing it. <laughs> Listen, the, the AI stuff that I saw at GTC was just mind blowing. Mm. <laughs> it's just well, insane. Like, like exciting or just like mind blowing? Like, oh, there's brain on the wall. It, to me, it would be like what I would, what somebody, if we could bring somebody forward in time from about 1890 into the present. It's, a, it's, oh. it was something like that. If you really, like, it's pretty nuts. Oh. Well, if we did bring someone from 1890 into the present, you know what? They wouldn't have any useful skills. And neither do any of us anymore. And that's why that these giant companies have all the cards. Dell workers can stay remote, but they're not going to get promoted. Which is weird because Dell historically has had a fairly strong culture of remote work for a lot of their roles. But they've apparently done an about face and they're trying to change their corporate culture. I think in a lot of ways, they're looking to try to get those people to leave without another layoff headline. Really. Yeah, I agree. Because like on the face of it, it's kind of like, so I can live in a lower cost of living area, still making the same salary. I just can't make more money. I don't know if that's the worst thing in the world. And Sam Bank for Freed, he last week made the argument. was like, listen, guys, I'm not a bad person. Sure, I stole billions of dollars. Yeah, okay, that happened. But I'm still basically a good person. I think you should give me like five, six years in prison. And the prosecutors have countered that offer. <laughs> Sam Brankman Freed deserves 40 to 50 years in prison for the FTX fraud, prosecutors say. I don't know. SBF has got a point that for the assets the company still had is worth basically what the investors put into it. But the people managing that are kind of mismanaging it. So, But that's like me kind of saying to you, yeah, I stabbed you. But I missed all your organs. You're Why gonna, are you still mad? You're going to be fine. Ironically, if he did stab somebody, he would be looking at less time. Probably, yeah. Especially if he did in San Francisco. Yeah. And uh, if you are one of these people that's been laid off, then you are probably going through the absolute hell of trying to get a new job. And maybe one of the reasons it's so bad is because of this. Job boards are still rife with ghost jobs. What's the point? The point is, apparently, you need to create the illusion that your company is always expanding. And one of the ways you can do that is to create fake job app or fake job openings that you never intend to fill at all. I just let people waste yeah. 45 minutes to fill out eight different things to put the same information in, even though it doesn't matter. And you can take their data and put it in your data vault and sell it. <laughs> and they said it's because these companies are afraid that people are... Going to just up and leave with no warning. It's like they don't have any loyalty to these companies. How will they not? They treat us so well. And one man who employs a lot of those people, and I'm sure was happy to cut them loose, has uh, gotten some bad headlines recently about his pharmaceutical exploits. The scene in business headline is Elon Musk details his prescription ketamine use and says investors should want him to keep taking it. His PR person is probably like, <laughs> Talking about your prescription ketamine use, like, <laughs> well, that is not the move. I think Don Lemon brought it up in that oh. controversial uh, interview, so he... I didn't think... I watched it. I didn't think it was that controversial, but Elon Musk really reacts badly to a lot of Like, things. even the smallest pushback, yeah. yeah. But ketamine is a really strong drug, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's my understanding. I don't think it's the kind of thing that... I didn't even know that they could give you a prescription to use that at home. I thought that was, like, for certain. I mean, for you and me, no, absolutely <laughs> not. But if you're the richest man in the world, they'll give you a prescription for anything. How do you think he decides? Is this like, ah, you know what? It's Sunday. I don't have anything to do this afternoon. <laughs> Let's just head into a K-hole. <laughs> Yeah, he also said in the interview that he works about 16 hours a day. It's like, 
Doing uh, what? What does he do? Post That's, posting on X. <laughs> yeah, so he he tweets a lot for someone who claims to work as much as he does. I mean, he's got all these businesses, but he's not hands on with any of the products. So he, SpaceX is doing great. It's not like he's down at Neuralink just rooting around in somebody's head. <laughs> See, that's what I wonder. Like, if all of the leadership at these different companies, if they like try to like push him off on the yeah. others, like SpaceX is like, no, no, it, we were, he was here last week. You guys take him, and they're like, no, <laughs> they're just all. <laughs> Hey, Elon, uh, you know, we're kind of busy here. You want to just go get the CEO pregnant again? <laughs> Is that something maybe that interests you? <laughs> we got to get these rockets on the moon. Yeah. We're busy. We're on a schedule here. And uh, this is something that we're going to be seeing a lot of. Remember these four characters because they are going to shape humanity's future. <laughs> NVIDIA reveals Blackwell B200, the new GPU, the world's most powerful chip for AI. This article completely misses the big picture for what NVIDIA is going for. NVIDIA is not even interested in selling the B200 GPU. They want to sell you the complete data center solution, and that's exactly what they unveiled at GTC. 120 kilowatts for just one of those racks in the liquid cooled configuration. That is AI. I have, I'm like 90% sure that something indistinguishable from general artificial intelligence is going to be running on this generation of hardware. It is, it is utterly insane. Well, that is the technology of the future, but the technology of the future is not NFTs or 3D TVs and maybe not. VR, the other hot hardware that was supposed to take over the world. <laughs> Sony reportedly pauses PSVR 2 production due to low sales. <laughs> Even though Apple is getting a kick out of people strapping a literal brick to their head, they probably are showing us the way in terms of software experience. Uh, not if this catches on. Yeah. Because then we won't need all that VR nonsense. We'll just have it in our side, inside of our skull. Musk's Neuralink shows the first brain chip patient playing online chess. And so, the better headline, Civ 6. Yeah. Oh, that is the better headline. Who cares about chess when yeah. you're playing Civ? I mean, Civ 6 has a lot more user interface concerns, right? Yeah. Also, imagining a scenario, like, you know how long the turns get eventually in Civ? <laughs> but, like, you're also dealing with, like, probably the slowness of that connection. And it's like, oh, my gosh, hurry up and finish your turn. This guy said he played for eight hours. Wow. Straight, because he hadn't had the chance to do it. Now, what would be what would be your first game if you were Neuralinked? Ooh. It can't be a shooter, obviously. Play Baldur's Gate. Like, right now, I'm still yeah. kind of obsessed with Baldur's Gate. Be a pretty good one. Yeah. I would say a shooter, but like you probably couldn't. You don't no, have the control thing. for that. And it looks like we are all going to definitely get this technology. Apple has already announced it, and now Google. Google is bringing satellite messaging to Android 15. They haven't announced it, but somebody broke down the newest preview build and it's all up in there. So that'll be fun. That'll be a new way of them to track me around the clock. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe the MacBook sales are beginning to decline a little bit. So much so that Apple is like, uh, let's get the plebs on this, but not the new ones. <laughs> Walmart begins selling the Mac for the first time, the M1 MacBook Air for $699. Those have probably been in a warehouse for two years. <laughs> Plus, we just found out that that M1 has that terrible exploit. Yeah, uh, well, all the M, all the M chips, I thought. I think the, the M3 one. is less vulnerable mm -hmm. for whatever reason. <clears throat> and uh, we have been talking about a new kind of thing that porch pirates are doing and some thieves, which is to jam your Wi-Fi so that your wireless cameras don't work. But the thieves probably aren't smart enough to do that on their own. Where are they getting these devices from? Andy, drone companies are uh, that market radio jammer devices online despite the FCC rules outlawing them. If you file a complaint with the FCC unless things have changed dramatically, they will come down hard on these people. Except a lot of these are just Chinese companies running them through Amazon. Amazon. They'll they'll put a stop to it via Amazon if they're not careful. So it is one hundred percent illegal. You can never do that for any reason unless you're law enforcement. They always have a monopoly on violence. This excited me until I got to the last paragraph. <laughs> last paragraph was a big caveat. <laughs> Researchers 3D print wood objects from sawdust ink texture, appearance, and smell similar to the real thing. Well, let's talk about the good parts. 
it's just wood. Yeah. You take waste wood from a, like, you know, a mill or something, you grind it up, you put it in here, you mix a little water in or whatever with it. You get this beautiful paste that prints just like PLA, but you give me the last paragraph. It's uh, not very strong. You didn't read the last paragraph. It has to be cooled to some insane temperature with liquid or dry ice. Freeze and bake. Negative 85 Celsius. Uh-oh. You can do that at home. Then it has to be heated to 180 Celsius. Also mm. doable. And a very careful balance. Mm. So that's not really DIY. They're going to have a maker lab for that at our library. <laughs> and then they're going to have some terrible burns. <laughs> Both freezing burns and hot burns. Oh, I totally missed that. I thought that was just like brittle. Yeah, I would assume no. it wouldn't be very strong. But no, I guess that if they do that hardening technique, that makes sense. Yeah, it's amazing. It's there, like really good stuff. There's a there's a guy that has a woodworking channel. And he's like, let's put wood glue to the test. And he did all kinds of different wood joints to see how it would fail. And wood glue is amazing stuff. Like it... The wood glue does not fail. The wood fails before the wood glue fails. A lot of the jointry they do for some of that, too, is also really cool. It's Japanese. Yeah. yeah. No fitting stuff. Yeah. yeah, I feel a lot better about the terrible things that I've done with wood glue. None of which involve carpentry. <laughs> LARPing as a carpenter, maybe. They just slice in a clip of Wendell drinking the glue. Put drop into his eyes. <laughs> and one man who probably is tempted... To eat some wood glue and end it all because his <laughs> career is over. Hertz CEO resigns after blowing big gamble on EVs. We covered this originally when it happened. It's like, hey, Hertz is going all in on EVs because I think it's going to be less maintenance and less costly and they can just have little cars to zip around. It did not work out that way. They were more maintenance and quite a bit costlier. And also their, their resale value wasn't as good. 80% more maintenance and repair costs now that we've hit the... X number of years and those batteries are starting to go bad and this was a uh, opinion piece in the Atlantic this was a a voluminous a tomb (laughs) 33 minute read (laughs) come on I skimmed it Yeah. in the phone based childhood now and this is a very very long article about all of the things that are wrong with giving your attention starved children a phone and that we're now getting to the point where kids who've had phones all their lives are getting old enough that we can talk to them about it. They're not positive. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, I was amazed when I did the Foothills Trail last year. We talked to one of the shuttle drivers. He was an older guy. And we told him we were just using a paper map. And he was like, really? He said that in the last few years, like everyone just uses a phone app wow. for navigation. Which were seems... you doing that for like extra challenge or... No, just because I don't like what happens if I lose my phone or it gets wet or the battery dies. Like, I just like to have a paper map. When you set fire to the forest and wait for someone to come and get you. Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, we have a sea change in our upstream data, not our downloads, but our what, what are we sending data about these days? BitTorrent is no longer the king of upstream Internet traffic. But if these uh, Netflix and Disney and everybody keep hiking prices, that's going to change. <laughs> well, isn't it interesting where we were a culture of piracy because we didn't like the the way it was delivered. So they gave us a new way of delivering it and then slowly chipped away everything good about it, put ads back in it, and now we're right back where we started. <laughs> oh, Pretty soon it's going to be the death penalty to pirate you know, Braveheart or whatever. And the AI will be out there looking for it. (laughs) And uh, one thing that you might not have to pirate this year, though, because they are stepping back. I think they probably saw, looked at their subscription numbers and they were like, you know what? People don't want this as a subscription. (laughs) Microsoft Office 2024 will be available without a subscription. I wish I could say that open source and alternatives to Microsoft Office was responsible for some of this, but I just don't think that's the case. I don't think a lot of people know that there's alternatives. Well, like open office and there's so much cruft and the way that we do software development at scale has changed so much since those projects. We really need to do like a lift and shift of those open source office products to make it easier to build and contribute to open source office products. Who's working against that? Microsoft. One of the most powerful companies yeah. in the world who's going to rule AI 
And control is forever. There's also like Google Docs and Google Sheets on the non-open source side that are. Yeah. Those are awful though. Like you ever try to use those on mobile? No. Well, I've but, I've used Google Docs on mobile just to look at our news stories, but. Did you download the app? Because it won't function without the app. Really? I'm convinced nobody at Google is actually using their own products. If they were, they'd probably be better. Like Google Drive doesn't work most of the time on my phone if I have to upload more than one file. Yeah, it's a disaster. Google Drive is kind of annoying on iPad. That's because leaders of large tech companies make a lot of bad decisions, and they don't make them with the software in mind. They make them with the line going up in mind. And sometimes there's backlash. After 114 days of change, Broadcom CEO acknowledges VMware-related unease. <laughs> aka customers are leaving in droves i would say unease may be better stated as dis-ease <laughs> in the corporate office <laughs> also uh you'd think that you would have an easy way to just copy your files over a usb cable from android but that is not the case at all it's not even remotely a little bit the case. Like MTP, that's been broken for years. It doesn't work properly. It's limited to USB 2 speeds. It's it's just, like, it's shockingly bad. Well, if you are Russian, you are suffering from sanctions and other things, and you will continue to suffer. Microsoft is now blocking Russian firms from using its cloud services. Oh, you got an orange one. Is it the taste of the old sun-kissed? Ooh, it tastes like old um, cream soda. That's orange sherbet. Mm. Most likely. It's definitely not cantaloupe. <laughs> these are these are so sweet that like my like the thing that makes saliva is just like, please stop. I can't have it. Like it's a little nugget of sugar. What do you expect? And uh, it is shocking. How bad in the real world, if you're in school right now and you're like working on databases or whatever, it's never going to be like that. The data you're going to get is going to be dirty. It's going to be wrong. <laughs> Rogue tabs it's gonna be everywhere. Awful. I had a problem this week where I let ChatGPT write just like, you know, a quick little function to read fields from a database. And I was getting a crazy error. And I was like, what is going on here? And ChatGPT had decided to lowercase and replace spaces with underscores in my data because it was like surely your data will be properly mm, formatted yeah. right no <laughs> took me forever to find that one but it could be worse formula one chief appalled to find team using excel to manage twenty thousand car parts like i'm not even mad this is just genuinely impressive like how how are you doing this this is incredible i like it when you open a really big file in excel it takes sometimes like a minute. <laughs> Can you imagine how long they have to wait on this one? So I guess he's going to bring in a managed database. Now he claims that this is not rare in the F1 world, that a yeah. lot of car teams are using Excel. It's not rare in the world at all. People use the tools that they have and they get good at them. I mean, I worked on a thing once where a savant had built something in Visual Basic Script inside of like Excel. And it was just like, this is an entire application. Like... Where did you learn to do Visual Basic script? It's like, I don't know. I've just been doing this for many, many years. And it's like, did you read a book or something? No, just the help in the program. And it's just like, my God. Well, uh, we've learned that Apple has tiptoed around or perhaps just kicked sand over a lot of the DMA rules. And they are introducing new things to compensate for that. Like, okay, you won't let us charge this fee. Then we're going to charge this fee. One of those fees has a logical fallacy. That someone has pointed out. Uh, Apple working on a solution for EU core technology fee, possibly bankrupting apps that go unexpectedly viral. Basically, Apple wants to charge you money for an app that is pay is free, but you would then owe Apple a lot of money. Basically, fifty cents, or I guess it's half a euro. What do you call the cent in euro? I think a cent. Is it still a cent? Okay. 50 euro cents. Anyway, it's going to cost you about half a dollar for every install over a million. Was that what it was? So if your app is free and you get 5 million installs, now you owe a bunch of money to Apple, even though you got nothing from it. Hmm. No one would ever just do open source software for the good of all mankind. That's insane. Who would remember, do that? Remember Flappy Bird? Yeah. That would have ruined him. <laughs> that guy would... Oh, yeah. Mm. 
Now, this is something that we are very familiar with, and I think Tom's Hardware <clears throat> misses the point here, which is not modern web design. No, it is the Facebook Pixel, the analytics module, <laughs> the CRM, all the tracking. That's what this is about. Modern web bloat means some pages load 21 megs of data. Entry-level phones can't run some simple web pages, and some sites are harder to render than PUBG. I mean, all that tracking stuff is true, but some of the designs we've gotten... Let's be real. Well, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, do you even use Do we the web? need this many images on this page? It's like, oh, we'll just do that with a background movie. And it's just like, why does this need to be a seven meg background movie? No one cares. Transparent video on the web. Uh, but it is awful and the web is terrible. And I don't know how we fix it. Gotta try to get that award. But uh, we do have... Some good news about the web, which is now that you can buy the Apple stuff on it. You don't have to go through the App Store anymore. Oh, how exciting. But again, the fees just continue to accumulate. Epic will take 12% cut of the Epic Game Store sales when it launches on iPhone this year. 12%. Well, 12% is better than 30. It is slightly better. That's true. And uh, this, I respect. It's a little bit sad, but at the same time... Let's just get away from that, right? We don't need this in the game industry. <laughs> Larian started work on Baldur's Gate 3 DLC and then canceled it. The studio was elated. Wasn't really coming from the heart, says director Sven Wiki. Vinky. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I've read his name multiple times and have no idea how to I'm say it. I'm pretty sure the first part is Sven because yeah. it's Volkswagen, but okay. So, yeah, they're going to move on to something else. They said that they did not like the combat restrictions that... Dungeons and Dragons required of them. Yeah. They also hinted that maybe they would do a uh, another Divinity Original Sin game, maybe, possibly. Which is kind of the same thing. Yeah. Well, but, you know, no D&D restrictions. Yeah, I almost wonder if this is more of a, we're tired of working with Wizards of the Coast. Maybe. <laughs> more or, so or, than anything else. <laughs> or Hasbro. Yeah. Now, Krista, you often talk about how everything is AI now, and it drives you crazy. And then we sort of... Do a little thought experiment. I mean, everybody's done this, not just us. But it's like, well, what happens when it's nothing but Recursive, bots yeah. creating and consuming and it's just a big circle? What does that look like? Well, apparently it looks like shrimp Jesus. <laughs> Facebook's algorithm is boosting AI spam that links to AI-generated ad-laden click farms. I've seen some of these. No, I didn't see this the Jesus, but I saw uh, it was it's tiny houses, but they're very clearly AI-generated. Sure. <laughs> It's, there's a lot of Jesus with crustaceans. Like, why is that a thing? <laughs> what is that happening? Yeah, I've not seen these. But apparently these get a ton of engagement. Do they, or are they bots engaging with it? Oh, they yeah. get the paywall. My favorite one was they gave a bulleted list of some of the more popular themes, and one of them was Jesus summoning crabs. <laughs> <laughs> but why? That's just so the idea of Jesus a fisher so of men hilarious. I look forward to having a, a conversation with somebody in the industry it's like well I know your analytics dashboard is showing like you have a lot of traffic <laughs> but but it's really is, just this, people this looking is, at this are you aware of crab Jesus <laughs> but this is just bots you need to look over this it's not a real thing they tracked it down to a couple of like, content farms I think it was one in Vietnam maybe one in Singapore or something like that and it seemed like they weren't really following a like a design they were just simply letting it happen yeah well and that's how many more are going to do that because you know eventually it's lucrative i guess people just see jesus and they're like i just don't vote jesus right i, guess, I don't care yeah. what he's doing i don't care if he's a shrimp or whatever like i, just, but like I said i've seen the tiny house ones and then on youtube i've seen like ai generated gardening videos that's wild yeah well, uh, social media is dying. Is it possible to save it by federating it? I kind of have my doubts. Meta just showed off Thread's Fediverse integration for the very first time. <laughs> he says around a chocolate square. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is not full federation yet, but if you turn this on and you download their little thing, it will start pushing your posts out to the... Uh, the federated thing, like what was the name of the Mastodon? Like the Mastodon mm -hmm. users can now pull in your stuff. Now they do warn that edits and deletion, because it's federated, will no longer work. So if you put your stuff out there, it's never going to be deleted. Although Facebook never deletes it either. Yeah. <laughs> so 
That doesn't change. Inevitably, you're going to post something and you're going to see you had a typo in it five seconds after you posted. Oh, they give you five minutes. Mm. Well, theoretically, the Fediverse could accept your edit or accept your deletion, but that doesn't mean they will really honor the edit or honor the deletion. So it just it just depends. And you don't have to federate with Mastodon. Like There could be other open source things. So this might not be a terrible thing. But you do need to keep in mind that whatever you put out there is always going to be out there. And in the future, the world is going to change. And it's going to change in ways that you don't expect. So do you really want it to be out there? This answer should be no after you read this headline. Users ditch Glassdoor, stunned by the site adding real names without consent. So you leave a review on a, for a company. It's like, this company does this really awful thing. And it's like, great, we know who that is. We can retaliate now. And they are aggressively, just like Facebook did, trying to force the real name policy. Oh, just like YouTube did. Or Google. Now, Glassdoor because of these reasons doesn't require you to do any of that stuff right so they never captured your real name so how are they getting it well one woman emailed support and had her name and her email and they immediately updated her account wow this is all because they bought another do you remember the name of the other thing they bought i do not was it like fishbowl or something like that Anyway, they got a, they've got a new product. That product requires real names. So now they're going to join the two, and now everybody has to have a real name. Fabulous. And, uh, about a year from now, we'll hear Glassdoor going under because no one wants to put... Well, first it'll be Glassdoor data breach. Mm, yeah, and then... And uh, YouTube, has, they're aware of the AI revolution and what's going to happen. And they're trying to get in front of it, which is going to be like standing in front of a steamroller. <laughs> YouTube creators have to start labeling their AI-generated content whenever they upload it. Unless it's kids' videos. kids. If you make kids' cartoons, you don't... It's, it's just like, okay... And there's a ton of that crap, too. Oh, it's wired paywall. It's so brutal. Kids' cartoons get a free pass from YouTube's deep fake disclosures. Which is, again, insane. Now, they do have some... Like, it's specifically if the subject of the video is AI generated. If you're using AI to go in and, like, touch up the lighting or do, like, a background or something, that's okay. It's just that, like, like if a human or an object has been generated, I think. Man, YouTube's going to be so upset when they have to start paying out to all these little <laughs> channels that are just nothing but I, content farms. I'm not for getting the clicks, right? I mean, they're, oh. that's fine. And Reddit, as they go into the IPO, they paint a target on themselves, and the trolls are ready. They're ready to take the target. <laughs> the register has the headline, Reddit gets a call from Nokia about a patent infringement ahead of going public. So this is just Nokia putting them on notice. Hey, <laughs> very nice website you've got there. We, uh, we, we, uh, we think you might be violating one of our patents. And it's like, oh, oh. which one? Nice billions of dollars you've got there. I would hate to have to interrupt that if you only gave me like, I don't know, 20 million of it. Maybe I'll go away. They point out that Nokia has won a lot of these in the wow. past. And uh, I checked right before I put these, uh, sorted the stories. It was now at 46. Wow. So if you jumped in, you did make some money. Reddit IPO, prices IPO at $34 per share, the top of the range. And that seems excessive. Up. I mean, didn't we go through this with with Dig? Does anybody remember yeah. Dig? And then and then thus was born Reddit. Where's the where, where's the Reddit successor? We need the Reddit successor. Are we going to build the Reddit successor? Come on. You know who I bet we can't afford to host the Reddit successor. <laughs> you know how I bet remembers Dig, the Reddit board yeah. who have already put in their SEC notices that yeah. they're going to sell in <laughs> September. Or we whatever. are out of here. Uh, Chris, you're a big Wordle fan. Are you still Wordling? I don't Wordle as often as I used to, but I still like it. Well, apparently that is really popular and other companies are looking to take advantage. Games are coming to LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a cesspool of non-just yeah. awfulness. Who asked for that? Was anybody, you know what? My resume and like my networking, it doesn't have enough gaming in it. You know who asked for that? Control-Alt-Win-Shift-L. You're welcome. So that is... Uh, Puzzle games. And they're going to be competitive. So, like, your company can be repped by your top scoring Wordle player. It's not Wordle specifically, but that. There's some sort of dystopian novel to be written there where, like, your performance at your job doesn't really matter. It's just, like, your Wordle <laughs> score at LinkedIn. Or, you know, it's like there's one guy who's just really bad at the job, and everybody's like, why is he here? Well, it turns out he has the number one <laughs> yeah. score, and we 
really like that. I can't wait for the YouTube channel from the with the clickbait headline like I was the engineer that added Control Alt Win Shift L, and it's like, really, okay. Well, uh, this is a little bit terrifying, and I feel that this is another step, and probably a pretty big one, toward the death of 230, which is exactly what everybody wants here. Judge rules YouTube, Facebook, and Reddit must face lawsuits claiming that they helped radicalize a mass shooter. Now, it's interesting. The judge said, if these were forum posts, I wouldn't say this. That's, that makes sense. Someone else wrote it. This person found it. You hosted it. That's not your fault. He's saying that the algorithm is at fault here hmm. because the algorithm kept feeding into this problem. Could I say that this judge radicalized me and sue him? How would you? Well, that's absurd, but. Well, I mean, you didn't participate in a mass shooting. Yes. You have to do that step one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you got a case. And uh, we have talked about uh, you know, like the a lot of the calls that you get and the scams that happen online, like I don't have any, I, I give these people no quarter. They're horrible. But there may be more to it, and this certainly proves it. I don't forgive them, but I do understand, I guess. Filipino police free hundreds of slaves toiling in a romance scam operation. So they post jobs, which aren't even related to any of this. One guy was a chef, and they were like, oh yeah, we need a chef around here come in for a job interview and they immediately captured him and began uh, torturing him with car batteries. Oh. He had electrical marks on him. And so they capture you and they make you romance scam people. Fabulous. So be careful out there. What a weird world we live in. That was not a good story to end on. No, it got real sad. Eat a jelly bean and tell us. We had lots of GTC coverage. You should check that out. And also, um, we got lots of nonsense on Friday. This one's green. Kind of a lot of nonsense. All right. <clears throat> Identify it. Key lime. Or just lime. So we have lemon lime? That's probably it. It could be lemon lime. It could be sun-kissed lime. Oh, it could be. It's like it was like bright green, like booger green. Kiwi, juicy pear, margarita. It wasn't pear. It wasn't margarita. All right, stay tuned while we eat more jelly beans. Goodbye. Thanks again, Mactor.